Hello, everyone. Welcome back inside the film room. I'm Zach Goins, and today I'm joined by Ted McGinley, who plays everyone's favorite neighbor, D Train Derek, on <laughs> Shrinking on Apple TV Plus. Ted, welcome to the show. I'm excited to chat with you today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And, and I just want to say, you're the first interview I've ever done outside of one group Zoom. Uh, that means I get all the exclusives, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lay it all out right now. <laughs> Perfect. Well, first, tell thing, me anything, by the way. Yeah. first things first, congratulations. Season one is in the books. Great reception. I absolutely loved it. I've watched it probably about two and a half times at this point because it's so freaking good. But yeah. I just want to congratulate you on the show, congratulate you on season two coming up. What's what's life been like now that you've got shrinking out in the wild? You know, it's so cool because, uh, again, it's one of these top secret deals. When we're doing it in production, we don't even use the actual name of the show. Everything mm -hmm. comes on code. And uh, so, and, and a low life character like myself, I wasn't allowed to even say I was on the show. And uh, I was so excited when it came out because I've, I've read a ton of half hour scripts in my life. Mm -hmm. This was by far the best I've ever read. I mean, it was so smart and oh, yeah. so inclusive of everybody. And then, and being a guy who often plays sort of a minor character, if you will, in, in a lot of things, uh, often your job in that role is to set up the star or you're setting up the joke for right. whomever is the funny one. And um, in this case, every character counts like there exactly. isn't one throwaway and there's not even a throwaway line it's just so smart and what a gift for me to get to be a part of it is oh, i mean i'm just pinching myself well you absolutely crush it let's talk d train let's get into some derek here because what a like pound for pound line for line just absolutely hysterical it has me cracking up i think I mean this with the most utmost respect, big time golden retriever energy. I feel uh, like he's just like happy to be there, having a good time, like enjoying everybody's company. I think he's like a bit outside the main action, but still somehow always knows exactly what's going on, knows everything, who, who's having sex with who, thanks to yeah. some, some extracurricular yeah. activities. But how do you channel that as an actor? You know, the perfect level of disassociated, but also, you know, you're, you're just like there for everything. You're invested in everything still. I have to tell you, I, I can take literally no credit. Uh, Bill <laughs> Long, it's true. I mean, it's just good writing. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's so like you can't wait to go to the only time I've ever had this experience where I couldn't wait. I mean, Married with Children was was a lot of fun. So right. going to yes and and hope and faith. I mean, where where I couldn't wait to go to work because it was fun. But in this case, like with Aaron Sorkin, uh, when I was doing some of his stuff, you couldn't wait to go do the work. And here I have that same feeling because I, I think even though I walk by with a dog, I have something to say that's always clever and smart. Right. I just like, you never get that. And it, it's just, and, and people are responding to that. And, and that's not me really. It's just really good writing and just so smart. Uh, but I love that golden retriever vibe because <laughs> it, it is kind of who he is. Like we haven't seen any of his underbelly yet. You don't oh, really, yeah. but he's married to someone, Krista, who is amazing. I think she's, mm -hmm. I think this is the best thing she's ever done. I think she's amazing in this. Uh, but she has all of these holes that she's trying to fill in her life. And Derek is a guy who's had all, everything's been filled by stuff that he, you know, he's a hard worker. He's a diligent right. guy, he's his kids. And now he wants to create some holes and he wants some space. And yeah. it's going to be fun to see where they, where they go with that. Uh, if, and, and again, he isn't, uh, you know, he's not, he's not in that much, which is fine for me. I am, I'm loving how he lives in this show, but, um, it it will be fun to see what yeah. he. And you're right. He he right. sees a lot. Like he's. I would say he's the most normal. Uh, uh, yeah, the least the least drama going on around him. Right. But, so he was the most centered person, 
in the show. I don't like to say that out loud, but I do personally. <laughs> that's what I use when I'm playing him is that uh -huh. this guy was very centered, but has a great sense of humor. Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm curious to hear what you have to say here because you mentioned like we haven't we we've, we've only scratched the surface with this character because he is, you know, just like in passing doing this or here for one scene while he's reading the newspaper. And I'm curious, you know, we hear a little bit of it. He's obviously been off working. He's about to retire, get some time off. When you're approaching the character, what do you have? What kind of story have you developed in your head as a background for him? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, when I first read it, I thought in the first bit was so small I thought I don't really know I don't really know what to hang on to here like I I can't start I have to build something I don't know what uh -huh. it's going to be. and I'm hesitant to say anything because um I feel if I do it will fill in I, I think you don't want to spoil anything of what's to come with Derek I, I, I don't know what's to come but I think that if I start to fill in stuff for people it will change how they see him the fun part about yeah. Derek is the mystery him. yeah and so he's kind of <laughs> an enigma in a way and I'm enjoying this way but I definitely have um uh, I filled in a lot of his holes right. and how accurate it's going to end up being I don't know and I kind of you know I had all these questions initially and then as it started to go and work I thought okay I'm on I'm on track, just keep mm -hmm. playing what you're playing and we'll see where they steer it and if they steer you different. The one note that that Bill Lawrence, who I love, uh, has, I mean, he basically, this has been a total gift from Bill to me, just mm -hmm. try this. And, but the one thing he said to me is, everything, he gets away with murder because he says these things that people should not say. Uh -huh. But he's always with a smile and a wink. And I just hang on to that always yeah. and that's where he lives. And that works with that golden retriever thing. Well, there's no better line that encapsulates what you just said than eat a dick, Pam. That has to be one of the best line deliveries in the history of television. I love it so much. But well, I know you've been, from speaking with a lot of the cast, everybody says that you were encouraged to you know improvise on set that people like you had the freedom to just kind of like run with it see where it goes was eat a dick pam scripted was that was that improvised How no, that, that was scripted. i don't think i had the guts to go for that but uh i mean jessica will no problem they, <laughs> they are like so much fun this is a massive professional tennis game it's just whack whack, <laughs> whack and you can't wait and jason will just throw something and you're like whoa i didn't know and it's so much fun because they're always there to pick it up and run with it. Right. And they never know. Like, we'll go all the way through, die laughing. Then, you know, they'll say, okay, let's try another. It's just fun. Like, that is, that's magic. I love that so much. And you, you, There's got to be a bloopers reel out there. Some sort of uncut scenes that, that we wow. need to have out in the public. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You can't believe <laughs> And the crew is so cool because sometimes they go on a little too long because we're just riffing and having fun. It's like, all right, everybody's got to go home. But at this point, I mean, everyone's just laughing because everybody is so clever. This cast is a magic oh, in yeah. that part of improvisation. And it, it really is fun to have that ability. Definitely. Well, talking just about Derek and his antics in general, you know, I'm curious, peeing off the roof, it seemed like it was a, a very, like, just like a bit at the beginning, they plant the seeds in the first episode and then it comes full circle. I love that so much that that is in the finale, how we find out that, oh yeah, Liz had no idea about Jimmy and Gabby hooking up, but D train has known it for a while now. How did that, that no, character it's trait become exactly so right. important? It's really, really a good point of yours is that, and that goes back to how unusually smart and clever the writers are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just amazing, Jason, Brett, Neil, uh, Bill. They are they are so thoughtful about how it doesn't. It's never one dimensional ever. And if there is something like that, you can bet it's going to come in. Right. It, there's a scene in there where I was sitting on there. Uh, she, I think she's tumbling rocks, and I say, "Look at this tree." Look at this beautiful tree. And we were filming out there one day doing something. And I said, look at this tree. And next, you know, two weeks later, it's in the script. So, 
you have to be careful what you say around anyone on that set. But it is uh, super, super uh, clever and open. And that is the greatest environment in the world to work in. And it starts at the top. Those guys give you space. There's not a lot of judgment. If you screw it up, you know, if you say something that's not funny. And initially, I was just trying to go exactly by the script and by the word. And right. then but you can't work opposite Jason or Jessica without flying. So once I knew it was okay, it, you know, it's a you lot. Gotta, of, you got to let it rip. <laughs> you always do. I mean, the, the writing is always the best and the smartest. And then you can just riff a little. They just use a little bit off. Of that is, it, it's just so much fun. And Derek is a guy who, who wants to get through this life with this light, least amount of stress yeah. and joy and happiness. And he's surrounded by a lot of people who have a lot of drama in their life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the one really cool thing is that his, they have a relationship. He and his wife have this amazing relationship where they say things to each other that they seem cruel sometimes, or they mm -hmm. seem perhaps off color, but they're super honest with each other. Right. Uh, and they love each other. Like they really love each other, but they can, which is a, a super cool relationship. And I, and I think, I think Bill and Krista have a little of that relationship. They're just so open and they just used to being funny and clever with each other that that lives, that sort of crosses over a little bit. Bill has told me that Derek says a lot of the things that he wishes he could say. Yeah. I was curious. I was going to ask you, like, obviously, when you're going to work, you've got your your on screen wife, who is the, the real life wife of your showrunner. And sure. there, when Bill is crafting the script, I was curious how much of that, you know, is a representation of their real life relationship, or like you said, uh, what they wish it could be like, what they wish they could say. Because you know, that's, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. You're right. I don't know exactly because I haven't spent a lot of time in their house, but. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but they are. He has said it's sort of an alter ego. It's sort mm -hmm. of maybe it's a Walter Mitty thing. I don't know. But he, he loves to say these things and see what it would yeah. be. Like. So he uses me to say things just to see what that reaction would be. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're the guinea pig out here. But yeah. I love the relationship between between Derek and Liz because, like you were talking about, it is so so loving, so wholesome. Even though there is some of that stuff that makes you think for a second, but then when you realize just how that how well they work together that it's genuine and it's it's interesting i feel like it's refreshing to see because on tv i feel like there's usually either like the old married couple that has been jade they're like jaded they've been they hate each other's they're, they're checked out all of that kind of stereotype and then there's on the other end the the like honeymooners oh. but Derek and liz are in that perfect middle ground where it's everything is genuine everything is loving but they also know that they're like separate people. They need their space. The the holes like you were mentioning earlier. What's the key to their relationship? From the very first time you see this couple, you understand clearly. I mean, it's brilliant. Their, their relationship. When she says, no, go talk to them. They're asleep in bed. And she wants me to go talk to Jimmy, who's up all night partying. Uh, and I say, oh, can't you just do it? And she gets up and throws a pillow at me. And I say, love you. It, <laughs> Is, is perfect and it's so real right it, mm -hmm. to your point it's i just think they are really a great couple and they make so much room for each other to to be who they are it, it's beautiful and it's fun like and playing opposite chris does there is always something coming and you never know what it's going to be i love that it's so great absolutely well i've got one last question for you before we wrap up I've been asking this to everyone because I, I I love the answers here. But in the third episode, it's called 15 Minutes. We learn about this therapy practice in which you set a timer for 15 minutes, turn on a song and just cry it out, let it all out. So I'm curious, not not Derek's song, Ted McGinley. What is what is the song that you would put on for 15 minutes? Mm, that's a tough one for me. It's it's definitely going to be it's. I love Blake Shelton's home. Okay, a little country. Um, that one has, I feel like, saved my life a few times. Uh, and um, uh, anything from Harvest, Neil Young's Harvest. Okay, some classics uh, and country. Uh, kill me. And 
for sure. But I put Harvest on a loop mm -hmm. and my I've, I've been with my mom just uh, fell and had to have a hip replacement. She's 92. And so I've been sitting in a room for three weeks with my mom uh, in in a like rehab facility. And um, I played home mm -hmm. every single night as she was going to sleep, you know, and it just like that develops a whole new meaning. Um, and that if you're looking at tears or that sort of melancholy, which is my kind of like, that's what I love. If I'm not dancing, that's what I, I want to be crying. Right. And, and that's kind of, uh, that's me in life. If, if I'm not dancing, you know, I want to be feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. It's a great answer. And I appreciate you chatting, shrinking, chatting Derek with me. It, it's a, a blast to be able to watch the show, be able to talk to you all. And I'm excited to see where this show goes in season two and what happens in awards season. Cause I have high hopes for, for shrinking and all of the cast. So thank, well, you, thank Zach. you. Thanks Zach. That's so cool. And, and it was an honest pleasure and I'm glad you took my virginity. <laughs> I wouldn't want to have it be with anybody else. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it.